Vaccine Stability Monitoring Using Lifetrack Technology. I'm Steve Zweig. This is from Clinisense Corporation. And this is a talk I gave at the Second Vaccine Congress in Boston, Massachusetts on December 8, 2008. Well, vaccines start deteriorating the instant after they are first created. Now, we usually assume in our studies that vaccines are stable from initial animal studies to final large-scale deployment. But what happens in real life? Well, in real life, vaccines are very delicate. And here's an example from uh, the Australian Immunization Handbook, which is available on the internet. And this uh, website lists 19 vaccines. And of those 19 vaccines, 17 out of 19 deteriorate at room temperature, so they're temperature sensitive. And 14 out of 19 are actually freeze sensitive, and as a result, their instructions say don't freeze. And let's look at two different vaccines here. Uh, hepatitis A vaccine is an example of a freeze sensitive vaccine, and it is all based, and it, the instructions say do not freeze. Discard if the vaccine has been exposed to temperature of zero degrees or lower. Although it's freeze sensitive, it's actually quite heat sensitive and it's stable for up to 15 months at 37 degrees centigrade. By contrast, um, a live vaccine, uh, oral polio vaccine, OPV, is very tolerant to freezing. It can be stored for up to two years at minus 20 degrees centigrade, but it's very heat sensitive and deteriorates after about a week at room temperature or even faster at higher temperatures. So this is a very delicate temp vaccine from the heat standpoint, but very robust from the cold standpoint. And it turns out that most alum-based vaccines are free sensitive. Now, the real problem is, is that vaccines pass through the cold chain from initial production to final use. And the cold chain is, is basically a series of refrigerators and refrigerated transport systems between the manufacturer and the final user. And at any step of the way, if a refrigerator or a transport unit isn't storing the vaccines right, the vaccines can be damaged. And as you can see, the cold chain can have a lot of links going from international transport, uh, national airports, vaccine, primary vaccine storage, intermediate vaccine storehouses, maybe more than one, health center, health posts. And e each of these refrigerators in these main units are connected by refrigerator transport in between. And what happens, uh, for example, for a freeze sensitive vaccine if one of those refrigerators is a little too cold and accidentally freezes it? What's probably this happens? Well, unfortunately, a recent study by Matthias shows that the probability is pretty darn high. Um, this study showed that 14 to 35 percent of refrigerators at any step of the cold chain may accidentally freeze the vaccines. And this is a problem. Um, WHO is keenly aware of the problems of too much heat for vaccines, largely because of their earlier studies with oral polio vaccine. And so they are recommending something called a vaccine vial monitor, or VVM, to be put on all vaccines. Now what VVM are, they're basically chemical tags. It's that little bullseye in that vial with the square in the center. The center of that tag has a chemical that gradually turns darker with heat and time. And when the center of it matches the color of the outer rim, um, then you know the vaccine's not good to use. Now these were originally developed for oral, oral polio vaccine, and they're really quite good for it. It's possible to fiddle with the vaccine chemistry, or with the TT VVM uh, chemistry, to get that to match the uh, exponential decay curve of, v of oral polio vaccine pretty well. The problem is, though, that many vaccines like diphtheria, tetanus, bursitis, hepatitis B, and the like, are damaged by freezing. And here, VVM failed to warn about this because that chemical in them just turns color slower and slower at cold temperatures, but when you dip below freezing, the chemical just stays white. And so the VVM basically encouraged people to set the refrigerators kind of low. 
because they don't want the VVMs, uh, the vaccines that they're handling, to turn darker. They want to make it look like they're doing a great job, and who can blame them? And the problem is, keep in mind, when you're in a refrigerator, there's only a few degrees difference between refrigeration and freezing, and here's the big problem. So Matthias has found out that any link in the cold chain, there's a 14 35% chance that the refrigerator will expose the vaccine to freezing conditions and, and potentially damage the vaccines. Well, you might be wondering, well, don't we have other ways to monitor stability like temperature loggers? And the answer is sort of yes or no, or, or maybe not really. Um, as we just saw, VVM are really a very good idea for some vaccines like OPV, but they don't really work very well for many of the free sensitive vaccines. Now we do have other approaches. We have something called temp temperature loggers. And these loggers are sort of passive temperature recorders. They, they record, but they don't analyze. And the problem here is they must, to un understand if the vaccine is still good, these temperature loggers must be retrieved, data downloaded, and analyzed. And this can take a lot of time. The one big advantage of VPM that's nice is you can just glance at a thing and see if the stuff is good or not, or at least that's the beauty, the th idea of VPM. And if it only worked, it'd be great. So the problem right now is that we don't, in many cases, get prompt feedback for cold chain problems because VVM aren't warning about freezing, and temperature loggers are just cheerfully logging away and not saying much at all. 